Hello everyone, welcome to my home again. I've been away from uh, YouTube for a while and it's because I've been working on a project um, for the last six months. I um, decided that I wanted to print a circular sock knitting machine and this was prompted because a lot of my followers from Latin America keep asking me where to buy these machines and unfortunately these machines were never marketed in Latin American countries. So there's no way they can obtain one. So I um, saw in uh, several websites, people were posting 3D modeling files to print your own um, knitting machines. So I decided to print and test two of them. The website I got the models from or the files from is called Thingiverse and I think some people have heard of it. A lot of people that are in the 3D printing hobby know it very well. Um, so the two models I decided to print, one belongs to um, a person from Germany. I am not going to attempt to pronounce a, his name uh, or her name. So I, I will write all about it on my blog as well as the other one which um, was designed by Mr. Roboto 19 or Steve Turner I think is his name. Steve Turner based his design on an auto knitter I think because I own an auto knitter and the um, models match perfectly well that machine. So I decided to start with the German one because it was a little bit easier to print. It took longer, but it was it had uh, fewer pieces. Um, I made it work, but it, the cylinders broke twice because the needles keep getting stuck. Um, it used this regular flatbed needles, and since I am a machine knitter and very used to them. The only difference is that uh, you had to cut the tail to make it fit but it was tricky because um, I think he used Toyota knitting needles and those are not very easy to find. So I worked with Singer and Brother and those were a little bit bigger and even the butts of the needles were longer so they would crash against the um, cam shell of the machine. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate that one because I wrote all about it on my blog, knittingfingers.com. There is the name. Uh, please um, don't forget to check it out. I posted pictures in all of it. So I kind of um, put that one aside and decided to concentrate in Mr. Roboto's um, machine. Uh, and after uh, an incredible amount of work it knitted. It's not his fault. He, I gotta say my hat to him. I admire him so much. His design is just the most amazing thing I've ever seen as a machine knitter myself, uh, knowing nothing about 3D printing. And this is just blew my mind away. But as knitters, we know that uh, knitting is uh, can be complex and you have to have a lot of practice. So I, as I said, I spent six months doing this. Of course, I have to start with <laughs> buying a 3D printer, which was a whole project on itself, and um, putting it together, learning how to use it, get the prints done correctly. Um, once that was done, that took, took several months. I had to learn how to use some modeling uh, software, very basic ones like 3D Builder. Mr. Roboto or Steve Turner designed this model uh, on a software called Fusion 360. And he was kind enough to share the actual Fusion 360 files in Thingiverse. So anybody could just download them, open them in Fusion 360 and modify them. Um, I am still learning Fusion 360, so the things I've modified are very, very minimal. Well, since I'm a crafter and I don't know anything about hardware, anything about uh, making anything out of wood, uh, I don't know any about that stuff. It took me probably longer than it would take somebody else. 
and I use the tools that I have at home. Granted, I bought so much hardware that I have a, a whole box of nuts and screws and I don't even know what I'm going to do with them. But as I said, repeat, I'm a crafter, I'll find a way to use them. Um, these are not the times to waste anything. So that being said, I want to po point out a couple of things about this machine before I show how to make a sock. The biggest problem I had was with the, um, some flippers, flipper-like thingies that go here, which help the needles to go back and forth to make to create a hill. So as you can see, these are metal ones. The original models are um, made out of P PLA, which is what is used to print in 3D. At least that's what I use because it's less toxic than other materials. So it's plastic. It couldn't uh, withstand the force of the needles passing over and over, under and over them. So that was the part that took me the longest because um, I could knit a um, tube, but I couldn't make a heel because for the heel, what happens is that, let me show you. This goes in this, oh, let me see, I can see. In this hole right there. Excellent design, by the way. So you have to have a torsion spring. So this part oh, is going to fall. Every time the needles pass, the needle will pass underneath this. And let me show you with a needle. I have my needles right here. Oops. Bear with me. So the needle goes here, goes on, and goes all the way down. But then to make a hill, you want to reverse. You want to reverse it, right? So you want it to go from here. Uh, I don't think my camera is really showing it. So it will go over here and then pass underneath here see that so what you need is that this part goes back to where it was so in other words gets up to let the needle pass and then has to go back to its place or it would drop the stitches and for that you need a, a torsion a spring and to put it right here so when this goes up, goes down automatically. See the movement? Well, that was incredibly difficult. Um, I printed like four or five sets of the plastic little flippers and it would break. They would break, they wouldn't stay, they would get stuck, they would drop the stitches, wouldn't work. And um, so I decided to contact um, one of the companies that sold me my um, first sock knitting machine that I bought new and I posted already videos about it. It's an Earl Packer based on a Gerhardt from back in the day. And they were so nice. They usually don't sell these parts and they sold me these parts when I explained what I wanted to do. Excellent customer service. And no, they are not paying me. I do this as a hobby, nobody pays me. I'm just telling you my experience. If you decide to buy from the people I mentioned in these videos, you do it on your own risk. Disclaimer. So please don't blame me. Nobody uh, pays me. My uh, YouTube video, my sorry, my YouTube channel is not monetized. Um, the ads you see at the beginning, YouTube puts it, not me, and. Uh, I have no relation with anybody. Nobody had sent me any machines to test, to promote, or anything. But uh, as a customer, when I'm, I'm treated well, it's my uh, responsibility 
to give credit to the people that made it so easy for me. So if I would have done this from the beginning, I would have saved myself for at least three months of work. So these ones were sold to me by Air Backer. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic company. And I couldn't find them anywhere else. I think uh, Steve Turner in one of his videos indicated that he ended up making his own out of metal. And you can tell he's really handy and he uh, knows how to do all that stuff. I'm not even gonna mess up with metal things. I mean, that's not what I do. I am a knitter and the only reason I'm doing this is because I love knitting machines and even if I have to 3D print it, I will do it. Another problem, so another problem I had was the needles. I um, used my Earl Backer because that's the machine I had, right? But um, the Earl Backer needles are a little bit taller. And a little bit taller than the Autonator. And I didn't know that. Oh, my mistake, I should have read the instructions. Steve Turner actually wrote everything you need to know about the needle so I should have known better so this is the difference this is a Gerhard Erlbacher and this is an auto knitter see the difference in size in height actually so what happened is the Erlbacher ones run smoother on the machine work less noise and uh, they don't get that stuff on the other hand these ones are noisier, get stuck a little bit, but the stitches come out better because this machine was designed for that. Designed for that. And I, um, let me tell you, there are two other type. There are several different uh, types of automators, and I didn't know that either. So this uh, machine was based on the smallest ones. My automator is a little bit wider than the one designed here. Um, so you gotta be careful with the needles. The needles are super important. If the needles are not the right size, the right height, the right length, it won't work. So that being said, I'm not gonna delay this anymore. I wanted to post this video because a lot of people have um, so, so many questions about these machines. So this is the way it goes. This moves around, not this. The needles go in there. You need like a spring or an elastic here to hold the needles. It has another um, like circle-like piece that goes here. And then you have the, um, the gears, one big gear here and one big gear that is the crank. The, the, uh, that you use to crank the machine. There are other videos out there. They are very, very good. You should check them out. Um, just do a search of 3D printed sock knitting machine and you will find them. Um, these people make it look so easy. It wasn't that easy to me, I, I, I gotta admit. But you know what? They made it work. I didn't have any help from any male relative. So I bought my tools. I did all my stuff by myself so maybe that's why it took me longer but it worked and it's <laughs> if you don't have any options you can 3d print your own machine and you like to do something new it's beautiful remember that the files posted on thingiverse are non-commercial use but you can share them you can print your own machine um definitely you should read what the license says that the, each particular designer uh, explains what kind of license they are publishing. So um, these are not to make them, must make them and sell them. It's not the way it works. There are other machines that I've seen, like uh, I think Dean and Bean knitting machines is one. And I've seen that on TV and I've seen they, their videos and they, it seems pretty, pretty good, that machine. And obviously everything's legal because they have the company um, I will say this, printing your own knitting machine is not as cheap as you think. A spool of filament is from 20 to $30 dollars, 
and uh, you have to have good quality or your prints are not going to come out right. Um, that without uh, considering the use of the machine, the electricity you use, and your time. It took me an average of uh, five to seven days to print an entire knitting machine. Um, and uh, that's a lot of work and a lot of time. So this machine, if you like to experiment, if you like to spend hours on it, working on this, putting it together, if you like tools, if you are a crafter, and if you have help from somebody else that are good with your hands and are good with tools, then this is for you. If this is not the case, I'd suggest um, to everyone that wants one of this to save some money. Either buy a Dean and Bean if you don't want to spend that much money or save money because a metal sock knitting machine oh my god you can't compare it with anything it's just, it just knits so beautiful but if you could save the money that's how I did it and buy a metal whether it's on eBay a vintage one I bought mine my auto knitter I put it apart cleaned it, oiled it, and tested it. I replaced um, parts that also I found on eBay. Those are not uh, uh, made anymore. Or if you want to buy a new from other companies that sell them news, new, new, I'm sorry, there are not that many. Or, or a plastic one. It depends what you want to do with them. A metal sock knitting machine is a workhorse and it will like you for years and years to come so um, please check my blog it's all written there thanks for watching this intro video of uh, 3d printing in sock knitting and please check my next video where I will show how to make an entire sock on my 3d printed Mr. Roboto Steve Turner knitting machine. Thank you and see you in the next video. Bye.